Right, so we're already past the halfway stage. It's uh, day 11 now. So at this stage, you should know exactly how many you have that are fertile and how many uh, that were empty, which you can discard. So, so far we haven't had to do a huge amount. The incubator has been doing most of the work. It's been doing the turning continuously um, for the whole duration so far. It's also uh, kept the temperature where we want it and we've just simply had to top up that water to uh, keep the humidity up in the incubator. We were a bit busy with work on the house um, at the one week stage so I didn't get a chance to film in detail how we candled the eggs and which ones were infertile but I have kept back the ones that were developing fine and we can have a look at those uh, with the light in a minute. And when you candle the egg, you can see the red veins and what you're looking for is almost like a red spider. You've got the central embryo and then some veins which spread out from it. When you see that, you know you've got a fertile egg. So when it comes to day six, day seven of the incubating, you can normally at that point tell which are fertile and which are not. Um, so you want to go through one by one and candle the eggs and when I say candle that basically means you're shining a light through the egg to see the, uh, the contents of the egg uh, and you can normally see anything that's going on in there or if it's empty. Now if you've had uh, any problems with the eggs before setting or even during that first week that embryo can start to develop and then die and what happens then normally the uh, blood vessels will disappear and you end up with a red circle around the embryo and when you see that kind of red faint line all the way around that normally means that the embryo has died and the blood has moved away from the embryo but when you want to look in a bit more detail I'd highly recommend using an LED light and the most common version of that is probably the one on your phone and it's a nice clean light um, and we were able to see everything we needed to see just by using a phone. So we'll have a look at that now and let's have a look what's going on inside. All right, so just put this against here. So there we go. So you can see the blood vessels there. And if we hold it there for a bit, you should be able to see it moving inside. Isn't that amazing? very clear in that first week when you're looking for that red spider that everything's okay. When you get to this stage the movement is more of a giveaway than anything else so have a look here see if we can get another you see that kicking away nice healthy chicken there and the last two eggs there we go much bigger chicken there that's more like what we want to see. Again, nice movement. Make sure you put them back in the same angle you took them out. And the last egg. Yeah, kicking away. Just give it a little turn. There he is, moving around. Beautiful. Right, so we'll put all these eggs back. All right, so hopefully that gave you an idea of what you're looking for uh, in your egg and, and what sort of development you want to see at the 10 day stage. So I've gone through and I've removed any of those empty dud eggs and any of the ones where the embryo has died and we've ended up with seven eggs here. And I'm pretty sure that these seven are certainly developing and hopefully we should get majority of these hatch in a week's time. Like I said, when you're candling, if you can try and keep the same angle of the egg, have a look round and then put it back in how you found it. That just means the turning is going to continue where it took off from. So as we near the last week of the incubation, we want to make sure we've got a few things ready. We want to make sure we know the exact hatch date, which is 21 days after setting the eggs for chicken eggs. And when we know that hatch date, you want to come back three days from then and that is the point where you want to stop the turning of the incubator. So whether you're turning them manually or they're on a cradle or they're in a tilting incubator, make sure that it is not turning after the 18th day. Another thing we want to make sure is that we've got enough space for the eggs to hatch. If your incubating has been done between dividers, it's a good time to take the dividers out on the 18th day and that will allow the eggs to just lie on their sides 
and the chick will be able to get in position ready to hatch out. Apart from that, as far as the incubator goes, we don't need to do anything else. We'll let, let it continue turning until those last three days. Um, and we need to also make sure we can push our humidity up as well on those last few days. So at this point, you wanna make sure you've got everything ready for the chicks when they hatch. So first job is we've got to make sure we've got a nice way to keep these chicks warm after they've hatched. So they will hatch out in the incubator and we'll keep them in there for 12 hours at least until they're nice and fluffy and walking around. And then at that point we can move them to our brooder. And our brooder can be anything from a cardboard box or plastic box with a simple lamp over it. As long as there is a space where the chicks can move away or move closer to the lamp. So there's a a bit of a graduation of heat in the box or you can have a large pen with a single light or multiple lights there's loads of products on the market some have heated mats some have a almost like a fake hen so it's a, a heated shelter for them to go under um, you can also use ceramic bulbs a bit like you can use with reptiles and that is basically a heat source but no light and that can be quite nice because you means you can get the chicks used to daylight and more of a natural lit situation rather than giving them 24 hours of light. Things you want to make sure you've got ready on your checklist is chick crumb or duck crumb. Now that is a starter food for the chicks and it's a much finer, rather than pellets, it's a, a crushed version of that and it's specially formulated for growing young birds. You also want to make sure you've ordered a drinker and the drinker needs to be either a gravity fed drinker. You can use a small saucer or tray, but make sure it is not deep water. You can put marbles in the water or pebbles, but you do want to avoid the chance of the chicks falling in and drowning. And it does happen very easily, even with the smallest amount of water. And that's something else as well. You want to make sure with the incubator, if you're putting in additional water to get the humidity up, make sure there's no chance that anything can fall in there after it's hatched. The last thing I can think of that you also need to get ready is some sort of base for your brooder. Now don't be tempted in the first week to just have a load of shavings in there or straw um, because quite often they can't get a good grip on that. And especially if you've got weaker chicks or chicks with slightly splayed legs, they really want something to grip onto. So corrugated cardboard with the corrugated side upwards works quite well. Um, but to be honest, with a small batch like this, I like to use just a, a towel or a, you know, a small kitchen towel wrapped around a piece of cardboard so it's nice and taut. And, and they can just get their little feet and claws into that um, and get a bit more stability, which is gonna help them get nice and strong on their legs. Okay, another fancy list here, just everything you need to get ready in this last week, ready for them when they hatch. Uh, you wanna make sure you've got a heat source, a lamp or a brooder of some sort. You want to make sure you've got some food and that needs to be suitable for the birds you're hatching ideally a chick crumb and you want to make sure you've got your drinker make sure it's no risk of drowning a nice uh, gravity drinker is absolutely fine and they can just drink from the outside of that and there's no chance or risk of them drowning and lastly you just want to make sure you've got a box or container or pen ready for them to go into ideally a circle is perfect because they can't crowd into a corner and crush each other. Um, but you do need to make sure it's big enough so that they can come away from the heat source. And lastly, you just want to make sure you've got the right floor covering for that pen. And like I said, if it's a small hatch, maybe up to a dozen or two dozen, then a, a towel is absolutely fine and it's not the hardest thing to change out each day. Okay, so the eggs are going back into the incubator we need to make sure they continue turning as they were before until the 18th day. Keep an eye on the temperature and humidity, but apart from that, continue as you were before. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can join us in the next video for the big hatch.